Things sometimes get a little out of hand in Kingdom vs. Kingdom, and what you're about to watch in this video is the Ark of Osiris League Season 2 Champions battling against us, swarming our flags three different times. And in one of those swarms alone, our two kingdoms lose a grand total of over 6 million troops and about 50 million power. Stick around in this video for some crazy swarming, possibly some of the craziest I have ever seen. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskool Gaming, a sponsored content creator for Rise of Kingdoms, and what we're about to show you is three absolutely out of control flag swarms with mixed results. Some very successful for the folks we're battling against, and some not so much. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos and throwing a like on this video. This was recorded by our Alliance member, Ifu, long after I went to bed. Our opponents in this Kingdom versus Kingdom, this is our very first season of Heroic Anthem KVK, are none other than the Ark of Osiris League Season 2 Champions, HKL. And they use some of those Ark of Osiris tactics swarming down flags with some mixed results, sometimes actually super effective, other times not so much. In this instance, there is a swarm with a rally, and it is on a building flag. And as you may know, with a building flag, you can only have one march in a time building the flag being in that structure. So it is very hard for any one player to keep that flag alive. In fact, this was one of the attempts by HKL that was very successful, and they are going to swarm down and destroy this flag. The additional pressure of swarming down a flag is very meaningful, but as you might imagine, it comes at a very steep cost. In one of these reports, there will be literally dozens upon dozens of marches involved with massive losses. Here is the second swarm, and don't worry, yes, we do have some reports toward the tail end of this. This is the second swarm on a built flag. This is a Zenobia primary as the garrison captain with a Theodora secondary. Good to clear the debuffs. Wu Zetian might in some ways, however, be a better choice. And you can see in this instance that Ifu is trying to solo fill this flag as much as possible since it's right next to his city. That is a tricky thing to do. First of all, hard to even target the flag. In this case, because you have a march in the flag, you can just tap onto one of the marches on the side of the screen and it should pull up the flag for you. And he may even have to retreat some marches at some point and bring them back in to the flag to fill it again. Here he's got yet another March of Infantry, dumping nearly everything he has into this flag, almost every infantry unit he has, trying to hold on to this thing to keep it topped off. Because the secret to a flag swarm is you're trying to get so much velocity taking down the flag's health that the opposing team can't reinforce it fast enough, and the negative trades of battling into 2 million troops at the start are offset by the fact that you get it so low, so fast, that the opposing team can't deal with it. But in this instance, unlike the building flag, this is a situation where perhaps Ifu can solo fill and defend. But look, you can see the velocity here, actually, of how fast this flag is dropping. It looks like Ifu is deciding here, like, I don't have enough infantry to solo fill this flag. And this is an attempt by HKL that is successful. But how do we define success? Yes, they're going to get this flag to burn. But as we look into just the top of this report, and unfortunately I don't have the whole report, you can see that every single march that's swarming is losing 100,000 troops to the 20,000 or so that the garrison is losing, and there's also AoE that does damage. But here is the third swarm, for which we have a full report, and it is absolutely out of control. And I'm going to tell you right now what numbers are going to be in that report. For our kingdom, there is going to be a loss of 1,026,000 troops. Now, some of those are going to be in the hospital and can be restored. It is a grand total of 9.618 million power loss. However, for HKL swarming this flag, and now we've got Ifu solo filling again at like, this must have been 4 or 5 a.m. my time. HKL in this swarm is going to lose 4.877 million, nearly 5 million troops for a grand total of over 38 million power loss. That's right. You're watching Kingdom 30, 
losing 38 million power over the course of literally a two-minute period. Yes, this is a very high velocity of loss. You can see Ifu just popped another 50% expansion so that he can send more troops into this flag because literally, I think he now has every single march he has keeping this thing topped off, except one march that is perhaps going to get a rune. He realizes this, by the way, and says, okay, I guess I've got to maybe send one of the marches in the flag home. Now let's talk about, by the way, how you deal with this situation as a defender. In a best case, you get a couple high power players to port right next to the city, and they can keep reinforcing the flag, and you swarm out the marches that are swarming your flag. But if you don't have the field presence to do something like that, and here you can see Ifu retreating one of his marches to put yet another one full of infantry back into the flag. He's actually running out of infantry at this point, and he's going to have to send some T4 because that's just like what he has left in order to try to keep this thing as high as possible. Which brings me to the next thing we need to talk about, which is that a garrison is much, much, much more effective, as is a rally, when they are kept nearly full. It is very difficult to battle into 2 million troops when you bring 200,000. However, if you can very rapidly reduce the enemy to a million troops, okay, a million troops, and you're battling into that with 200, 300,000, that's less daunting for sure. So if you can keep the garrison nearly topped off, if you can keep a rally nearly topped off, that is a much, much better situation to be in. And now that you can retreat your troops from a rally and drop them back in, there's an argument to be made that Maybe you shouldn't try to reinforce a rally with like 300,000 troops in a march, but instead you should bring many marches with 100 or 200,000 troops and cycle them in and out of the rally, keeping it nearly full and topped off, which is something that we saw, by the way, HKL use against us very, very effectively with their garrisoning. So Ifu has done something similar in this case, planting down, holding this flag with an astonishing number of troops committed by both sides, and, and you can see that happening unfolding on the screen. And there are certainly marches that are better than others if you're going to swarm down a garrison like this. You want to use commanders that have talents and skills that obviously benefit them in this situation. Not city-hitting related skills and talents, but general conquering talents that makes it so the garrison takes more damage or you take less damage and so on. Now in a moment, we'll be looking at this report. And although HKL was able to burn a non-trivial number of flags by swarming, the losses were severe, and you'll see in a moment exactly what this sort of report looks like when people are swarming a flag in this way. And Ifu, by the way, has very strong crystal technology. Honestly, if I've learned anything from this first round of Heroic Anthem KVK, it's that as a whale, I might want to pull forward as much of my spending as possible before Pass 4 opens, getting as many crystals as I can, teching up as hard as I can. But here you can see the rally, 338,000 or 31,000 lost for the garrison, over 800,000 lost for the rally. And as we make our way through this report, hundreds of thousands lost for the uh, attackers to the tens of thousands lost for the defenders in some instances where we've got mostly T5 in the garrison and they're attacking with T4. You'll see some of these reports where it's like, man, we lost 10,000 troops. They lost 190,000 troops. And in that realm, that really happened. In this case, we've got the Wu Zetian that I think is very strong in this instance. Healing is actually pretty decent when you're getting swarmed like this. Like, you just need to survive. And in some ways, you'll have debuffs that cut your healing. But in other ways, like, you really need troops in the garrison in a way that is not normal for how a garrison defense would typically go. And yes... We're moving through this report. There were so many things in here. Absolutely astonishing. How So what I want to show you now is a few things that I would recommend if you are going to be swarming a garrison and what you can do if you are in a garrison that is about to get swarmed. Okay, a couple things you can do if you are near a garrison that's about to get swarmed like that. First and foremost, one thing to consider is putting in a garrison pair of your own, even if you're not the captain. The captain may have their march be completely depleted, so dropping in your backup garrison captains, whether it's Zenobia or YSS Theo or even old school Charles Martel, and heck, if you had to, a Richard I as like a just a backup, like something in there, especially in the earlier seasons of KVK is where I'm really bringing in these commanders that are from earlier parts of the game. 
you gotta have a backup captain in there so that the main captain can refresh if it gets beat down. That makes a huge difference. In addition, if you're limited on the number of marches that you can bring to support something like that, because all of the marches were focused on swarming the garrison, if you were marching a longer distance, you could do something a little more risky and bring more troops. And the way that you do that is by using a commander like Sepia, who has additional troop capacity. This is risky because this is not the best commander to be field fighting with. However, if you can get to that garrison with a larger amount of troops from a further distance, then that works out totally fine and it's good to have the troops there. As I mentioned, the opposite is true if you are close to the garrison. If you're very close to the garrison, the thing that you want is to have marches that just jump right in, they're smaller amounts of troops, and you keep it near full as possible. On the flip side of things, if you are swarming a garrison like this, the thing that you're looking for is to have as many complementary debuffs as possible. I turn to Tamaris here because, yeah, if you can make the garrison take more skill damage and everybody is swarming with more skill damage, that seems really, really strong. Those sorts of debuffs are incredibly powerful, and even looking at a commander like Guan, who is a strong field commander, also he's got a skill that's really good for hitting strongholds and cities. 15% increased normal attack damage and a 10% chance to reduce the attack of the target by 30%. Those sorts of debuffs are really good. Also having something buffing all of the marches that are swarming is a very big deal. A Joan of Arc and a Mulan in that instance would be absolutely crucial. Mulan offering a huge amount of stats and battlefield mobility for all the other folks that are going to be fighting nearby. And of course, the Joan of Arc, the massive amount of rage. Also a Constantine. Being involved in that swarm is a big deal. 10% less damage taken is honestly a big deal when you see those numbers that we were looking at where HKL was taking some really negative trades. Now, in the fights that they won, obviously the opposite is true. Those trades are less negative, but even if you win a swarm, you have to be prepared to lose a lot of troops. By the way, in terms of talents that you might use to swarm a garrison, this is an example of a build that I think does this very well. When we've gone into the Conquering Tree for Entrenched, some really great talents there, reducing the damage you take and increasing the damage you deal by 3%, a 6% swing, very good. So you may be wondering, Chiskul, why would you even swarm a flag like that? And I would argue that at the time this encounter was taking place, literally like right here, this is what you were looking at on the screen, these flags over here, at the time that this was taking place, HKL had the activity, they had the players, they had the bodies, we did not. So you use a swarm to generate a lot of momentum to try to burn a flag, and with the most recent patch and the way that those changes actually work, it only takes a couple hits on a flag that make it burn, and that flag will actually be completely destroyed. So it is a big deal to try to put that momentum in your favor if you think you can sustain that momentum to actually get the job done. And in this instance, our kingdom is very large and active compared to probably your average kingdom of our size, and so we were able to push them back to their pass, but make no mistake, they are very fierce fighters and very skillful in the way that they deploy their troops, with the exception perhaps of some strange and curious city rallies that they were doing today where the players were definitely online and I feel like they had to know that, but hey, somebody wants to rally your city and you know what you're doing? You can get some really crazy trades like that as well. So with all of that said, I've got a lot of respect for Kingdom 30 and the way that they battle. I am quite confident that they will battle with us again when pass seven opens. I, I do not think that we will have a free pass in this KVK. With that said, who knows what's gonna happen next? This is Heroic Anthem KVK. We're all learning this for the first time. And if you wanna see how it unfolds, then consider subscribing for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. Do me a huge favor, throw a like on this video if you enjoyed watching those crazy swarms. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.